Hey everybody, uh, Andres here, back with another kind of gear review. Um, today I'm just going to do a similar uh, kind of overview on a loadout or a, kind of a gear review if you will. This is for um, my scout, what I consider to be my scout loadout kit, which uh, consists of a East German uh, Sturmgut pack, uh, assault pack, and a... Um, a side pack. In this case, this is a, uh, I believe, a Vietnam War era gas mask bag, which I use as kind of like a haversack. Uh, the bag also comes with uh, a combat yoke system, which is basically, you know, shoulder straps that clip onto a waist belt. In this case, I'm using the waist belt of the haversack as the belt that the pack is supported on. And you'll see that here in uh, some of the pictures in a moment. So just a little bit of an overview on this pack. Um, I got this picked up this pack from uh, Varustaleka. They're a Finnish um, army surplus and outdoor retailer that uh, I've been purchasing things from for quite some time. And I, I really have enjoyed all the things that I've purchased from them. Uh, excellent quality. You know, the delivery and everything's been great. So hats off to them. Um... This is a very, uh, very cheap item. I'd say they're around, I think I got mine for around $7. And that included the, uh, the straps that you see here, the yoke. Um, they're really bomb proof. The outside is made of uh, some kind of like heavily, uh, very thick like cotton um, canvas material similar to what the Plosh Palatkas are made out of. I don't know if they have any kind of water treatment on them, uh, but I suspect that they did um, originally, and perhaps some of that's just worn off. Um, there are a couple different versions of these bags, but generally they all look the same. It's a very small bag, uh, rectangular bag, with uh, one main compartment, a top flap that comes over the top, and then we've got some uh, loops with... Um, attachment uh, belts that we can use uh, that's used to fix a Zeltbahn, which is like the German equivalent of a Plosh Palatka onto the top of the of the sack here. Um, in this case, uh, I don't have anything on it right now, but typically I would either carry a Plosh Palatka that I have, which I also purchased from Varusileka, or the or one half of a Polish um, Lavu, a Polish poncho cape. Um, so let's just take a little bit of a look at the inside here. Basically, uh, it's just one compartment. You've got these straps here, which are um, like friction system straps. And uh, they're pretty secure as long as you get them nice and tight and uh, just get this uh, these ends woven in underneath the uh, buckle. You flip that open. You've got a... Um, a strap on top here which kind of helps the pack keep its shape. It will also pull in the sides so that the top flap covers the edge so you don't have the edges sticking out collecting water essentially. Um, some versions of this bag have a an inner liner uh, PVC sock kind of lighter that uh, is stitched into the fabric. Um, some also have a rubberized fabric interior which I believe this one does have. I'm not quite sure. Um, but you can kind of, you can't see it because it's inside the fabric here, but if you take a look at these flaps uh, That kind of come over the top You'll see that they're Actually some kind of like rubberized material here You can see it's got a sheen to it and that does help with uh, some of the waterproofing You've also got one here on the front that just kind of overlaps um, just to make sure no water comes in the sides basically So just to talk a little bit about um, what I carry in this pack and uh, you know what its what its advantages and disadvantages are um, I use this pack as a scout loadout because it's very um, very versatile I basically carry the same uh, core items in the actual bag for almost any kind of condition um, with some modifications depending on you know the temperature range that I'm in or how long I think I might need to be out um, in some location what I'm going to show today is basically just um, the kind of kit that I would carry in at this time of year, which is the summer. Uh, we're approaching summer months, so it doesn't get too cold or anything here. 
Um, and um, again, this is a light kit. We're not going to see any tents or like, you know, sleeping bags with this setup. The most I would carry, maybe if I thought it was going to get below 40s, would be like a wool blanket or something, or maybe a quilt. But uh, in this case, we're kind of going with uh, the, you know, your primary shelter is what's on your body kind of system. So I would have, you know, a proper base layer, a nice heavy jacket or something that I would tie around my waist um, and sleep in that if need be. So just looking at the interior here, um, along the back of the pack, I've got a plosh, plosh palatka that's folded and uh, kind of forms a nice padded back for the pack. You'll see it's just folded over the top here. And so if we fold that up, you can kind of get an idea of what's in the pack here. And I'll just kind of go through the items. Um, one thing to note uh, before I go over the interior here is this pack and the, the haversack are designed around the 10C principles first, um, being that it's a scout kit. So the idea here is that I've got all of my 5Cs in my haversack. So if I needed to, uh, you know, once I get to camp or whatever, I can ditch this pack and I've still got all my 5Cs here, uh, you know, in my uh, haversack for the most part. You know, I, I might put like my um, plush palatka or something on my body for cover, um, but this bag is self-sustaining with the 5C kit, including some of the items that I'm carrying on my person, like a fixed bladed knife, my candling device, in this case a flashlight, and I've got a compass here. Uh, so going over the interior of the kit, we've got uh, just a folding saw. This is great for um, this kit in particular because it doesn't have the weight of the axe. I can always use the fixed bladed knife and the baton method to process firewood. But this will allow me to um, gather large logs for a long fire or something if the situation needs. I don't necessarily have to have a sleeping bag if I'm using this in a survival type situation. I could probably get by with, uh, you know, a canvas shelter and uh, having a long fire out front. So this gives me the ability to have, you know, uh, construct a long fire, having a nice saw like that. Here we've got a uh, SOL survival bivy. This is just the standard um, cheap one, their emergency bivy. It's, for those of you that don't know, this is basically a space blanket um, sleeping bag. So it's a space blanket that has been woven into a sleeping bag shape. Um, it is designed to be used inside of other bags, but as an emergency bivy, it could provide some warmth. Um, it's not going to keep you comfortable, but it probably will keep you alive. I hope I never have to use this, but I have it. Uh, we've also got a... Uh, what I would consider to be the stove of this setup. This is a stern, old Sterno, um, just a little folding stove here. It's made out of aluminum, I think, with some steel. And uh, it folds up into a square. You can build a small twig fire in it. Uh, it works as kind of like a rocket stove. It's just very cheap and inexpensive. This is something that I had. Uh, it works well. I have used it before. You just feed it with small twigs and... Uh, it is more efficient than an open fire, so something very lightweight uh, that works as a stove in this case. On the side here, I've got my repair kit, which is a roll of duct tape and a German uh, Bundeswehr uh, sewing kit that has, you know, various threads, um, heavy-duty threads that I could use to repair the pack, my plush palatka. I've got sock thread in here for wool socks, buttons, clips, all kinds of stuff. Pretty much everything I would need. I Probably more than I need, honestly. This is also something that I picked up from Varus Teletka at a very cheap price. I think it was around $3. Um, it's awesome. It has, you know, not sail needles, but it has very large needles. Um, definitely suitable for repairing, like, heavy canvas and things like that. Um, so that's pretty much my entire repair kit together is just this sewing kit stuffed inside of this duct tape right there. That should allow me to repair any kind of gear that I have on me. Uh, moving on, we have a Miltec uh, microfiber towel. It's a large towel. Uh, you know, this is um, in substitute of like, um, like a cotton bandana or something. I do think that uh, a towel, this is like more of a comfort item for me, but 
you could use it to um, filter some water or something like that if you needed to uh, at a very basic level. More, This is more for like a hygiene item for me and just as a comfort item. Um, you could always like wet it, throw it around your neck or something if you needed to cool off. I think a towel is an important item for uh, survival kits, so I carry it with me. In the core of the pack we have my, um, this is an East German Army uh, mess kit, I believe. Uh, I did not purchase this from Varus Deleka. I got it at a Goodwill for a few bucks, I think like five bucks. Um, and although it might seem a bit heavy compared to like ultralight options, there's a couple reasons that I prefer this. The obvious one is that it's made of metal and it can be used directly in a fire uh, or, you know, over something like this and nothing is going to happen to it. It's not going to warp. Uh, you can boil water in it. You can drink out of it. This top portion I use is a cup, so I don't need to carry a cup with me. It's part of the kit. Uh, basically kind of fooling that uh, everything should have more than one function idea. We've got a handle on it, which can be used to suspend this above, you know, fire if I needed to. Although in most cases, I would just put it right up against coals uh, or on this uh, this stove here that I showed. The other reason I really like this is because my food does not have to be separate from my um, my cooking container. It is all in one. So in this case, I've got uh, four MRE component meals in here. These are about yeah. You know, anywhere from two to three, uh, well, I'd say probably three to four hundred calories a piece. So, you know, you have two of those, just ration them out. Here's a couple of them. You know, I just got pasta marinara, things like that. I picked these up from uh, my local Winco. They have these quite frequently. So I've just got a, a surplus of them and they, they fit nicely in here. Truthfully, you don't even need to um, open these up and, and drop them inside. You can just boil some water and cook them right in the bag if you need to so you don't have to be cleaning out your pot constantly that's something that a friend advised me on additionally in, in addition to those four we have a fork in here uh, we have some candy this is just some lifesavers hard candy kind of a comfort item nice for energy though here we've got uh, some vitamins a uh, sachet of coffee some tea bags uh, in a plastic bag so it doesn't get wet so that's like my food, my drink there. And then I've repurposed this old uh, contact case with some salt and pepper. I like salt and pepper, especially pepper. And uh, you can, you know, add some water to these things and make stew if you like to. That's what I usually do just to warm you up before you go to bed. But that's everything. And it fits right inside this, uh, this cook kit. So it's totally self-contained. Um, you know, after you've eaten out of it, if you're concerned about animals, you can button it up, put this top thing on there, and it's fairly secure. Go put it, you know, a couple hundred yards away from your camp. Whatever, you're probably going to be fine. Uh, nothing's going to get into it. Um, not as secure as a bear bag, obviously, but not as much of a concern around where I live. Near the bottom of the pack, we have the ground cloth that I would use for my canvas shelter. Of course, this could be used to make its own shelter if needed, and I could use the Plash Palatka, you know, if it was raining heavily. We could just make a tarp shelter out of this. It has grommets all around it. Um, but ultimately, this is generally, I would use this as a ground cloth. Then at the very bottom of my um, bag, I have my sleeping pad. This is an inflatable sleeping pad. Pretty lightweight. Um, I don't use a mat or anything. I think a sleeping pad is... Uh, the way to go for me personally. I could probably get by with something a little bit lighter, but, um, you know, I want to be comfortable. What can I say? It's fairly lightweight. It compacts down very thin if you fold it correctly. Um, it's just what I like. It was inexpensive as well. And then, of course, uh, as I had mentioned before, we have the Plash Palatka uh, forming the back of the pack, which gives you some padding. You can do all kinds of things with these Plash Palat because they're great. Um, talked about them a little bit before. And that's basically it. It's just a sack. You know, there's no divided compartments or anything like that, like with the uh, Telemark pack. Um, and that's pretty much it for the pack. It's very heavy duty. Um, 
I actually did wax the top flap with some Greenland wax uh, just to help it ship water a little bit, but I don't think you would need to, honestly. Especially if you're running like a poncho tent or something around the top, like I usually do. Uh, for the most part, that's going to uh, abate any water that might get on it. Going over the rest of the kit here, let's move on to the haversack, which is, you know, my 5Cs kind of style kit. Uh, this is worn around the waist, so the side of this will kind of contour to your hip. Um, and it just has a breakaway flap here. So in here we've got uh, a balaclava. This is nice. You can use it as a neck tube. You can use it as, you know, you can sleep in it. It'll help keep your head warm. Made of synthetic materials. We've got some thin gloves, which I consider to be basically invaluable. You know, so your hands don't blister while you're processing firewood. Um, handling, you know, your cooking equipment, all that, those kinds of things. I don't like to get burns. Burns could be debilitating in the wrong circumstances, so thin gloves are a must for me. We've got our steak kit to make any kind of shelter that we would need to with the tarps or um, the canvas tents either way. We have a water purification kit. This is a, uh, a Life Straw Flex. Uh, in here I've got my filters, uh, tubing, basically everything is self-contained. This will allow me to continue filling this water bottle, which is 32 ounces of water, which I bring with me. This is worn on the opposite side of my um, hip belt to help balance things out. So this allows us to keep, you know, we could stay much longer, assuming we had a, a source of water. I've got my first aid kit in here. This has got, you know, bandages, gauze. Um, it's got uh, some Tums in it, things like that, antidiuretics, um, painkillers, things like that. Just a basic first aid kit of my own making, kind of. Got a snack in here, just a cliff bar. This is the only real thing that I would normally carry outside of my uh, cook kit, just so I can break into it and get something in me real quick. We've got some uh, very heavy, like, bank line style, uh, heavy duty bank line that I would use to help make shelters, etc. Of course, you know, cordage is multifunctional. You can use it for all sorts of things. And then inside the main compartment, last thing we have is some, uh, you know, toilet paper, basically, and uh, some hand sanitizer, just for uh, hygiene purposes. On the outside of this bag, we have a cool couple cool small compartments. Uh, here I have just a hand warmer. Usually I would stuff a couple of these in there, but I've only got one for right now. Will give you a little bit more comfort at night. Uh, they've been uh, really, really nice when I've been on snow camping trips, but obviously this camp, this kit is not geared around that. In the strap compartment here, uh, I have a, a large trash bag, which is a multifunctional item. Again, you can use it to gather water. You can use it as a like a sleeping bag kind of thing if you wanted to. You could stuff it with leaves. Uh, all sorts of things you can do with it. A trash bag is extremely light and easy to include in your kit for basically no weight. On the side flap here where the decon kit would usually go, I've got my tender kit which consists of a uh, fire steel here and a lighter. Then inside we've got just some paper, some dryer lint, I've got a candle in here, um, some pieces of cardboard that have had wax stripped on them. Basically, that's surefire for me. Uh, even if I can't find anything dry in the area, I can get a fire started with that. And that's basically it for this kit. Um, the straps here, uh, these straps, this this combat yoke system does not come with these green pads. These are Sarma TST um, sling pads. I got these from Varus Deleka as well, which is the, where this pack is from and some of these items. Uh, these, these sling pads are just meant for, uh, to make you know, these thin straps a little bit more comfortable. It just so happens that they fit perfectly on this um, East German combat yoke system. So I'm really uh, I'm happy with them. They're not extremely cushy. They're fairly firm. But when you compare it to the kind of unforgiving... Uh, simplicity of these original straps this is more luxurious i would say um my only complaint about them is they are a little bit more expensive i think it's like 
you know, eight or nine bucks per sling pad, which is more than I paid for the pack, but I'm not too worried about that. I got great savings on the pack. It's going to last probably longer than I do, um, so I can't complain, and, and these definitely make this more comfortable. One of the great things about this pack system is that you can set it up for, you know, a wider range of different situations. If I was going to go into colder temperatures, you can use these D-rings. There's D-rings on the pack at various places where you can lash, um, you know, a wool blanket to it or, uh, you know, a sleeping bag or a quilt. You could even attach, uh, you know, like a haversack to the bottom of the pack if you wanted to, or to the top. You could make a blanket roll and attach it over the top in a U-shape, just like you would do, you know, with your, um, with your plash palatka. Although in this case, the purpose of having uh, a poncho shelter half or something like that on the top for me is it's basically serving dual purpose. It's my rain gear and my shelter, so... I want it to be accessible. I don't want to have to dig a blanket out of it and have it get wet, wet or something if it starts pouring. So it's just a quick deploy. That's why I put it on the outside of the pack. But it's a very versatile piece of kit. Um, I don't think that it's well suited for, um, you know, if you're going backpacking, I wouldn't take it on anything more than maybe a, on a one night or two night just because, you know, you don't have that much room to play with. It can hold what you need it to for survival, but not much more than that. Um, generally, I would say you wouldn't want to pack this with probably more than 20 pounds of gear because with the strap system, the load tends to ride a little low on the back and there's not a lot you can do other than tighten your waist belt to try and get more of that weight off of your um, your try to get that weight up higher where you can carry it more comfortably. So would I recommend this bag to somebody? Absolutely. Um, being that it's $7 for these bags and it seems like there's a lot of them out there, pick one up. Pick up two. You know, buy one for your friends or something. If, if, if nothing else, you know, these make um, excellent bicycle panniers actually, which is something that they were advertised on the site for on the site, and that's actually why I bought them. I never intended them to use for use as a hiking bag. I was like, oh, these are cool. You know, the camo pattern's kind of cool, the strict tarn, and uh, they've got these heavy-duty metal clips on the top that you can just clip to the side of a bike rack, and you're good to go. Just put two of them on there. They're heavy-duty. They're awesome bags, um, and they work great for that. Uh, you know, if you're going to buy one, buy two. That's my opinion. These bags are uh, definitely worth the money. They're very strong. Uh you know, dependable bags. Um, you could definitely make uh, cons. Obviously, it doesn't carry much. Not great at carrying heavy loads, but it's not for that. Um, is it heavier than, uh, you know, backpacking backpacks or other similar day packs? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, can you scramble through brush and over logs and stuff like that and not worry about having it rip? Yeah, I don't think this thing's going to rip. And that's why I like it. It's bomb-proof. I think it's worth the extra couple, you know, maybe pound or two uh, over a similarly sized day pack. I think it's absolutely worth that. Overall, I say these are a great buy. And if you get a chance to purchase one, purchase a couple, like I said, uh, you won't go wrong with them. Uh, you could even, you know, use them, keep one in your car with, like, your extra survival equipment. If you've got some extra pieces of equipment laying around that you, you don't use as much anymore, instead of donating that equipment or selling it or something, toss it in one of these and keep it in the trunk. You never know when you might need it. Um, these, group, these make great, like, 48-hour bags. If you're into the bug-out bag thing or, like, get-home bags, I would absolutely go with these. Um... Yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the bag, uh, if you know anything about them, or you'd like to see more about this bag, drop a comment or something. Um, I'm hoping to do more gear reviews like this. Um, most of my stuff comes from Barstarleka, and I really like them, so I'd like to review more of their gear. 
Thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to you know com leave a comment or subscribe if you'd like to uh, see more of these kinds of videos. Uh, I'll probably be doing you know uh, fewer gear review videos than I do compared to like my trip videos, but uh, I do want to squeeze these in every once in a while. So if this is something you enjoyed, please leave a comment uh, or like the video, and uh, you know I'll do more.